Hello guys, welcome back to this video on forces and free body diagrams. Now you should be familiar with forces because you've been studying those since third or fourth grade. And you will recall that forces can be categorized as either a push or a pull. But did you know that these forces can actually add and subtract from each other? In this case, we have a girl pulling on a box to the left. And we have a boy pushing on the box also to the left. Now because these forces are in the same direction, they're actually going to add together. And the total force is going to be the sum of the two individual forces. Let's take a look at another example. Here we have two groups of men in a tug of war. The men on the left are pulling to the left. The men on the right are pulling to the right. Now because these forces are in opposite directions, they're actually going to subtract from one another. And because it looks like they're about the same magnitude, the total force is going to be zero and nobody's going to move. We call these forces net force. The net force is the sum or the difference of all of the forces. Sometimes they add, sometimes they subtract. And remember, the direction does count. You've also probably heard of balance forces. Balance forces are equal and opposite, which means they cancel each other out and the net force will be zero. With balance forces, the object is not going to change its motion. Unbalanced, uh, ba unbalanced forces, on the other hand, are not equal and opposite. One is larger than the other and the net force will not be equal to zero. So in this case, you can see that the results are quite different. The people on the right are going to get wet and muddy. Now if I were to ask you what happens to an object when an unbalanced force works on it, you would probably tell me that an unbalanced force causes an object to move. And that would be true. If the object is at rest, it would begin to move if the force is big enough. But what if the object is already in motion? Then what happens when an unbalanced force is applied to it? Well, a more correct explanation would be that unbalanced forces cause an object to either speed up, slow down, or change direction. And you should recognize these three things as velocity, a change of velocity. And we have a word for a change of velocity. What do we call that? If you said acceleration, you would be correct. So a more complete explanation would be that unbalanced forces cause an object to accelerate. Let's explore that idea a little more fully. To do that, scientists use what they call free body diagrams. They call them free body because the body or the object is free to move in any direction. They then apply vector arrows to the object to show the forces acting upon it. This allows them to analyze what's going to happen to the object. Let's see how that works. Here I'm using this yellow rectangle to represent my object and I want to put it out into space where gravity or other forces won't affect it. So let's put it into space. Boom, there we go. Just like that, we're out into space. So now this body is truly free or this object is truly free to move how it pleases. Let's apply some forces and see what happens. All right, I've applied a 10 Newton force to this object and it's a pull to the right. I've also applied a 5 Newton force to this object. It's a push to the right. So the question for you is what is the net force and what direction is that force on this object? Well, because the forces are in the same direction, they add which means that the net force on this object will be 15 newtons 
and it will be to the right. This object will accelerate to the right. All right, let's look at another one. This object has a 25 Newton pull to the left. It also has a 10 Newton pull to the right. Now because these pulls are in opposite directions, they will subtract. What's the net force on the object? 25 minus 10 leaves 15 Newtons. And what direction will that force be? To the left, because this one is the greater force. All right, let's look at another one. Oh, this one's in the vertical direction, but that doesn't change anything. Here we have a 12 Newton pull up and a 4 Newton pull down. They're in opposite directions, so they will subtract. And my net force is going to be 8 Newtons to the upper direction. Yes, this one's larger, so the acceleration will be upwards. All right, let's come back down to Earth. Here I have a book sitting on a table. Is that book accelerating? Well, the answer is no. It's not moving, so it can't be accelerating. But are there forces acting on the book? The answer is yes, they are. Yes, there are. We know that on Earth, gravity is always present. So let's put a vector arrow on the book, and we're going to label it G for gravity. Now is the book accelerating? Well, no, it's not. It's sitting on the table. So because it's not accelerating, we know that there must be a balanced force in the vertical direction, which means there's some other force up here that is equal and opposite to gravity. So let's put in another vector arrow, and we're going to call this the normal force. Where is that force coming from? Well, it's coming from the table. So while gravity is trying to accelerate the book downward towards the floor, the table is pushing back on the book with an equal but opposite force called the normal force. So these two forces are usually present on Earth. Now let's say we want to cause this book to accelerate. Well, we can do that by applying a push to the right side. This should cause the book to move to the left. But will it go easily? If these two forces cancel out and I put a push on here, it should really take off. But we know that it won't. Why not? Because there's one more force acting on this book in the opposite direction, and it's called friction. Where the book meets the table, the atoms are kind of sticking together, if you will, and that is creating friction. So it takes a certain amount of a push to overcome this friction before the book will actually start accelerating to the left. Let me give you one more example. Every year, at least one student asks me, what makes an airplane fly? And a vector diagram, or I'm sorry, a free body diagram, is a good way to look at that. We know that gravity is trying to pull the aircraft out of the air, and hopefully it won't fall out of the sky and, and, and crash. So we know there has to be a force that is equal and opposite to gravity. And there is. We call that lift. Well, where does this force come from? Well, it comes from the wings. The wings are made in a special shape called an airfoil. Kind of like that. And as the air rushes over these wings, it creates a force called lift. And that's what pulls the airplane up into the sky. Now, in order for that lift to work, the plane has to be moving in a forward direction. What causes the airplane to move in a forward direction? Well, the engines here shoot out hot gas. They burn fuel, and they shoot out this hot gas, and this causes a force that we call thrust. And the thrust moves the plane forward through the air, which causes the air to flow over the wings, which causes the wings to create lift, which lifts the airplane up into the sky. And there's still one more force we have to look at, and that is the force of the air beating against the front of the airplane. 
Now, you've probably felt this when you stick your hand out the window of a moving car. You can feel the air blowing against it, and that is a force that tries to push your hand backwards. The same thing is true of an airplane, and we have a special name for that. It's actually friction caused by the air, and we have a name for that. We call it drag. So, here we go. We got the thrust of the engines pushing the plane forward. That causes the air to rush over the wings, which creates lift. That thrust also is great enough to overcome the drag caused by the air, and that causes our plane to move through the air and go up into the sky. If we want to go higher, we just increase the thrust, which creates more lift. If we want to come down, we just lower the thrust, shut the engines down a little bit, and that creates le less lift, and the airplane comes down by gravity. So there you go. Quite interesting, I think, and I hope you do too. In this video, we talked about balanced and unbalanced forces. We said that unbalanced forces can add or subtract to create what we call a net force, and that's the, the result of adding or subtracting the, the forces. We said that an unbalanced force causes an object to accelerate, that is to speed up, slow down, or change direction. We looked at free body diagrams to analyze forces to determine what direction and how much net force there is on the object. And then finally, we looked at some special types of forces that occur here on, on Earth that may not be occurring up in space. We talked about gravity. We talked about the normal force that counteracts gravity. We talked about lift that makes an airplane go up, and we talked about drag. Now, there are some other forces, but these are, are enough to get us started for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a little bit about forces and free body diagrams. And if you have any questions, please get with your teacher and, and get those figured out. Or go back and rewind the video and play it again until you're sure you understand all these concepts. And as always, guys, I thank you for joining me. Thank you for looking at this video. And uh, I hope that you will choose to keep learning. Take care. Bye now.